So, it's Ninja Gaiden for kids! You never thought this would happen, but hey, there's finally a game that's like Ninja Gaiden for kids, and it's called Shiro. And it's this game that we're gonna review next, and it's uh, an old school adventure platformer. It really feels like the games that came out like 30 or 40 years ago, back when like the 8 bit days. The... And uh, yeah, you play as a character named Holo, and you and your sister are adventurers, and you travel around the world. You've been traveling since you were children together, and all of a sudden, one day, this uh, evil witch comes and steals your sister Shiro. And so you go off and you're trying to rescue Shiro from this evil witch. Now, it's a decent setup story for a game. Uh, it feels like a classic like 2D ninja game, as I said. It meets like a really tame Pocky and Rocky without like any of the weird like enemies and you know over the top cutesy expressions. Um, I feel like this game has a lot of promise, but the levels seem to be like rather unrefined. Like it just overall, this game just feels like it's lacking that extra bit of polish to be like a great game, and it's kind of like a meh so-so game. As a result, um, it's weird because if you die in an area, you have to go back a screen or two to restart. So if you accidentally hit the wrong button and you just grabbed a key, because there's a lot of keys so far, um, you have to repeat that section. So that you have to repeat all the jumping all that and it's sort of it's kind of ridiculous it should just put you back to where you just got the key because if it already has programming to check like from where you were before why don't you just get saved there I mean I think that's to just extra pad this game out and make it more challenging than it should be but um, yeah I, I just feel like that's unfair and it just feels unfair in certain areas because then you have to pretty much resolve that puzzle and go from there um, Areas they seem to be interesting at first. You start off in like a jungle area with like uh, Chinese temples, and then you go, I think, underground, and there's like caverns. And um, yeah, it's, it seems interesting, but it's just the levels are just so prolonged, it feels like, instead of it being like designed so that you're switching areas and it doesn't get boring, it gets kind of dull because the areas just feel that little bit too big. Um, yeah, there's a lot of careful jumping in the cavernous area, and that's my biggest complaint in this game. Like, the controls are kind of wonky. Um, they remind me of how, like, budget 8-bit titles used to be back when, uh, you know, they did, had a, didn't have a big team and they didn't have, like, you know, the time to refine their game. But now, like, you can easily fix problems like that with a little bit of testing. It's just the, the movement seems sluggish and it's like really non-responsive for like an action platformer which is weird because there's so many indie games out there that are like really well done and like um, like a problem like this you think they would notice like right away. Uh, there's a lot of wall jumping too which isn't unique to this game but uh, it should be easier when there's this much of it in a game. Um, I would attempt to slide down a wall like Mega Man from a game like 20, 30 years ago. And like that's sort of expected that you can do that. Instead I would just like plummet down the side of the wall instead of like sliding gracefully. And the gameplay experience, it sort of seems like meh and like the jumping and constant aimless side scrolling kind of made the game like lesser. Um, the game is almost demanding. Like it's got almost like pixel perfect jumping, which isn't bad as long as the controls aren't fighting against you. And there's these weird like Donkey Kong Country like arrows that you have to point and my controller is like on the fritz sometimes so the fact that you know you have to uh, get it so accurate that you'll die a few times easily if your controller's uh, not working with you. But yeah, they, they spit where you aim and they're just really frustrated to deal with regardless of any other issues. Um, apparently it's really short and there's a lot of people will never find out because I feel like they won't want to play the game that far and the game just lacks the polish for people to be encouraged to keep playing. Um, the sluggish controls and jumping, like, I was just hoping there was a shield or dodge option as the roll seems to roll your character really far ahead, like half the screen, I think. And then the, just the game needs more polish, like, this is not a diss against the developer, it, like, it's quite an achievement. I think only one person did this game, but, you know, I think it's interesting enough that if there was more time spent on the gameplay and the playability, 
Um, I just think a 30 minute game that was interesting is better than a padded area. Like this game, even if it was two or three hours instead of four or plus, it would have been a much better game. And then people would, you know, want a sequel rather than a game which seems to have like padded areas like this. Um, it takes around an hour to beat. I just feel like it's not worth the 569. I was going into this looking at like a cool old school 8 bit game, and it's just not that. It's just got too many bugs and mistakes for a game that should be solid with a number of games uh, getting released. Um, I feel like you can enjoy it if you get it for a buck or two in a sale, but um, it's, it's a great attempt at reviving sort of like a Jackie Chan 2D kind of side scroller action adventure game, but it's just too much time you're spent fighting the game's controls and level design. It's just not worth it for the price and, uh, you know, a passing playthrough. So, unfortunately, I'll just have to give it a 6 out of 10. I mean, it's a great attempt, but just all these gameplay issues really bring it down and it's not really fun anymore. You just, you're never going to see, like, the probably the last stage unless you're, you know, hardcore Metrovania, hardcore action adventure person. So take a take a share to that and uh, keep on gaming.